She looks away from the human carnage surrounding her, looks down upon the one she chose. His golden armor, dulled with the blood of his victims and his adorers, still reflects back to her the light of her single eye. He made his choice, and thus so will she. She turns her eye away from him, away from herself, and floats eastward toward the rising light. Welcome back Guardians. Today I want to talk about ghosts and specifically if ghosts can be evil, if they can be the villain, if they can be bad. I've had this thought for a long time, especially when considering dark or evil Guardians. For example, the Guardian Warlords during the Dark Age, were their ghosts also evil? Did their ghosts support their actions? And if they didn't support the Warlords, why did they keep reviving guardians who were no longer protectors of the light? The law book Ghost Stories that was released with Forsaken answers many questions about the relationship between ghosts and guardians, including whether ghosts remain inherently good. I will also answer another really interesting question, which is, can ghosts refuse to revive their guardian? As usual, the artwork at the beginning of this video was provided by Gamma Trap. All Patreon donations go towards paying Gamma Trap for his artwork. Link is in the description with rewards, which includes digital versions of the art. I don't take any of the Patreon donations, but if you would like to support me, channel memberships are also available with their own rewards and perks. Press the join button or link in the description for iPhone users. This is Marlin Games, and I hope you enjoy this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. I want to first cover how ghosts select their guardians. It is important to note that even ghosts don't truly understand or agree upon the revival process, and different ghosts have different opinions about how and why they revive the dead to form guardians. The first thing that ghosts seem to be able to do is sense the soul of the dead, sense their traits, their virtues, and their qualities. Have a listen to the chapter Ghost Hunter from the book Ghost Stories. His name is Cyrell, and Cyrell called me Strain. I found him on the far edges of Mercury in a valley that the Vex transformation had never reached. He seemed resilient, unwavering, old, and wise. I'd search so long for my better half that I didn't hesitate. If I had considered but one moment more, I might have sensed how tired and burdened and tangled his soul truly was, and I would have left him in peace, and I would not be a murderer of my kin. In this case, the ghost did not spend long enough scanning the person, and if they did, the ghost believes they may have recognized some of the negative traits, his tangled, burdened soul. Now, Akora's ghost actually believes that this is why ghosts partner with guardians, that ghosts complement the weaknesses of guardians, that they are meant to guide guardians and be their better halves. Have a listen to the chapter Compliments in the Ghost Stories book. Anyway, O said he had a theory why there was one ghost for one guardian. He thought that each of us had strengths that complemented weaknesses in our guardian and vice versa that we needed to be together or neither of us would be whole. It's not a romantic attachment, O said. If he had eyes, he would have rolled them at me. It is my belief that the traveler understood that normal people would not be enough to protect humanity, that it would take those who are extraordinary in both body and spirit, and that only by the merging of ghost and guardian into a single unit could this be accomplished. You will also notice that this law entry references the Traveller, and I get the impression that the Traveller also influences ghosts and who they revive. A ghost named Balthazar believes that the Traveller has predetermined their guardian. Have a listen to the Difference of Opinion chapter from the Ghost Stories law book. It reads, The Traveller, in her omniscient wisdom, looked into the past and the future, and from all the generations that emerged from the cradle of Earth, she chose the best of them to be her champions. Each ghost was lovingly and carefully created for their one true guardian. 
the ghost and guardian complete each other. This way of thinking encourages the idea of destiny, that each ghost only has one true partner, one true guardian. The truth is, from what I have read, the ghosts don't really understand the process of reviving a guardian. They mention being able to detect their soul and traits. They mention being drawn to their true guardian and just knowing somehow. They have theories that they are meant to complement guardians' weaknesses, but the overall message is they don't really know. And from what I have read, ghosts have never intentionally revived a guardian with the hope of creating a villain, a warlord, or an evil guardian. Furthermore, some ghosts who have never found their guardian continue to assist humanity through what is known as the Spectral Network. The Spectral Network is led by the Vanguard and consists of ghosts who have never found their guardian. And these ghosts act as spies collecting intelligence, very similar to that of the Hidden. So to answer the question, can a ghost be evil, I would say from what I have read, all ghosts are inherently good from creation. But, can they turn bad? So now let's take a look at dark or evil guardians and their ghosts. The Ghost Stories lore book gives some really good insights into how guardians can start off as a hero but progress to a villain, and essentially it comes down to having too much power. Have a listen to the chapter, The Chosen's Choice. It reads, At first he seemed reluctant, but the longer he remained and the more fallen he slew, the more they praised him. That praise emboldened him. He grew expectant, addicted to their exaltations and gifts. The more he consumed, the more the villagers' resources dwindled. He led expeditions to take from others. No warning, no diplomacy. He showed his might as one of the risen and demanded he be lauded as saviour. Those he once protected now died under his charge, and they venerated him all the more for it. This definitely explains how some of the warlords formed during the Dark Age, guardians who abused their power, and ghosts that couldn't predict their change in personality when they first revived them. Of course, other guardians were corrupted through other means, such as Dredgen Yor who encountered a hive wizard in the Hellmouth. So now, what happens? Why do ghosts keep reviving and supporting these evil guardians? Well, it appears that ghosts do not want to give up on them, and they believe that they can bring them back to the light, bring them back to being a hero. A single guardian can have a huge impact on the war against darkness and the enemies of the city, and for the most part, ghosts don't want to throw that away, and they choose to revive those who have turned bad in the hope that they can convince them to become heroes once again. The best evidence of this is from Destiny 1 lore, specifically when Dredgen Yor is having a conversation with his ghost. His ghost considers it his duty to try and bring Yor back to the light. Have a listen to Ghost Fragment Thorn 3. Yor is the speaker U.2 and the ghost is U.1. It reads, Consider this my last good deed. I am releasing you of the burden of my deeds, both done and yet to come. I will not abandon you. You will, or I will carve the light from your shell and leave the carcass of my first and last friend in the dirt of this dull red world for no one to find. Then I've failed you, completely. Not me, maybe the man I was. He is truly dead, I believe so. This theme of ghosts trying to guide their guardians back to the light is repeated in the Ghost Stories lore book. Ghosts feel obligated, bound to their guardians, even if their guardians are no longer good, and they continue to revive their guardians in the hope that they can convert them back to the light. However, ghosts do have their limits, and once they have lost all hope, ghosts can actually choose not to revive their guardians anymore. There are two examples of this in the Ghost Stories lore book. In the following example, a ghost witnesses their guardian destroying an entire village and consequently believes there is no hope in saving him and returning him to a hero. So the ghost chooses to leave the guardian dead. Have a listen. One winter night, clad in golden armor, he made war on a seaside settlement of fishers and spiritualists. Not a man, woman or child survived. Flushed with the high of easy victory, he and his followers were ill-prepared 
for the fallen war party that had been stalking them the last few moons. It was a massacre atop a massacre, and only he, one of the Risen, would walk away from this. She looks away from the human carnage surrounding her, looks down upon the one she chose, his golden armour dulled with the blood of his victims and his adorers, still reflects back to her the light of her single eye. He made his choice, and thus so will she. She turns her eye away from him, away from herself, and floats eastward toward the rising light. This to me confirms that ghosts are always good. They are inherently good from their creation. They try to revive guardians who have good traits, good personalities, good virtues. They try to complement their weaknesses, and if their guardian becomes too power hungry or corrupted, they try to turn them back to the light. But if they cannot convince a guardian to be a hero once again, they can just leave them. They can refuse to revive them. At this stage, I would say that ghosts are never intentionally evil. That concludes this latest Destiny 2 lore episode. If you'd like to support the channel and cannot think of a comment, you can leave the word chosen to represent the destined relationship between guardians and their ghosts. As usual, it has been a pleasure. This is Marlin Games. Peace.